And currently, I think that, that um, looking to the social housing situation in Europe, it's a, it's a very disturbing situation. Uh, on one hand, uh, uh, our societies and cities are shrinking, many of them, uh, which uh, leads to there are too many houses in German cities or in North Netherlands uh, cities or in Middle France, um, which affects the production and affects the demand easily. So it, uh, uh, it would put more the question of reusing some of the existing buildings and tra trying to uh, improve them than, into, than making new ones. That, that's, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the situations are very different per country. Uh, certain parts of France, there's an enormous need of social housing, like around Paris. Uh, and their yeah, innovation is needed how social housing can be paid on expensive areas. So expensive, I mean, in terms of ground price, uh, although that's differentiating these days as well due to the economic crisis. Uh, more expensive due to the to the pollution that's in the ground, or due to the to the proximity to roads, which cost extra uh, measurements for. Uh, for the insulation, um, so interior situations are at the moment still more expensive than outside meadow uh, situations. So, what to do with that? And in that case, I think it's very important that that, that gradually we try to uh, to say that when you are going to build in the countryside, that these houses have to be not only to pay for the ground but also pay for the infrastructure that's coming there. Or they have to pay for all the elements that they, these people are visiting, the operas in the city as well. So they have to pay for that as well. So to find a tax system that deals with that, to make, in that way, densification also means it equal in, in its price value uh, as it is now. So that, that is the, the challenge that we are facing in that kind of situation. In order to... Uh, the third element that we are... Uh, we are facing is uh, that recently we, uh, uh, the uh, social housing has uh, say enormously developed in the 90s and the beginning of the zeros, uh, especially in the Netherlands, but also in, in Switzerland and also in Spain, and, and that, had, that has enlarged the standard of housing enormously when I compare it with the 50s or, or the 40s. They have bigger houses, they have better balconies, larger balconies. They um, have better access by lifts and uh, emergency stairs uh, normally. They have um, uh, uh, say better insulation values. They need to have uh, much more differentiation uh, because people like differentiation and more individuality in it. So, And now they have a bigger demand also on greenness. They need to be green because they're public. Housing, social housing is still mainly paid by collective sources, so that, so that sets a tone in it. That makes social housing these days uh, quite challenging in times of when, in, when, when there's shrinkage, when there's less economy in it, and when sites, because of the inner city sites, are more expensive, as well this adds on it. We, need, we want to have better architecture, we want to beat the Mirador or the Salosia, we want to have an extra green, which costs 15% uh, or 16% more. So, uh, so, so how to do that? We need more money for making that. So, or the rents have to raise, which is impossible when the current financial situation, or we have to sponsor it uh, more better. That leads that there is less social housing these days, basically. That we try to do it more with unsocial housing, with the privately developed housing, and which is very complicated because of the banking system. So there is a lot of trouble now to make good social housing products because of this, uh, this four, three to four elements that I, that I mentioned. And uh, uh, how to escape from that? Well, here architects are part of a, of a giant economic exercise uh, to make that possible, to make that, that and, uh, we have to do what, we have to, to, to be uh, as, as inventive as possible, we have to invent projects where Social housing is part of an existing building, where it can be cheap, where you maybe make it green in a very effective, effective way, where you can 
uh, more like individuals are taking parts of the risks. Right? Like in, the, in the Rotterdam is happening now, you make a carcass with just a structure and the interior is done completely by the new inhabitants. Uh, and they take the risk for, the, for everything, for sewage, for the, and for the, they do all the renovation themselves, partly in a, in a way. Thus, shrinking the collective costs, shrinking uh, the collective loans on the, on, on, the, on the banks, and putting it more into, an, into the private initiative. Um, yeah, that, that changes architecture radically. That will not have the same ex- output or, or facade as, as it is before. Uh, that, um, um, so it will be good to show this product of this exactly this moment in that in that perspective in that in that process. Well, it's, if, for me, it's hard to imagine that architects are only solitude thinkers and workers on their spots. In a way, these things are so much part of a wider society, of the whole financial system, of all uh, political system. That 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 architects have to collaborate tremendously to find opportunities for for this kind of, say, escapes and for this kind of experiments. Another thing to add that we just discussed is about the differences between the countries these days. I think it's uh, because of the uh, economical situations are very different. Uh, Switzerland versus Austria versus Holland versus Spain versus Ireland, evidently. So that, uh, it's, but it will be a subject to discuss how to finance social housing in the coming times and what how, where and how to do it. Their, the economical potential is different in every country. And uh, so to calculate that, to see what we lack in that way and how to, to, to orchestrate that, I think that to show those differences that could lead to a kind of, hopefully, uh, maybe even a subsidiary program, which is not only national. I, I, I think the European Union, in the end, has to develop a certain kind of um, international granting system for, for, for this subject, for social housing. And that, um, I don't know if it will work out in a while, but, but anyway, to, to, to investigate it, to suggest that, that would, would help to put this uh, agenda on the, also on the proper level and, and, and to see what the possibilities are and to, to, to see what the financial um, uh, suggestions could be in, in, that, uh, in that case. And ultimately, I think another remark I would like to add is um, the best would be in the, f- in the future to mix social housing anywhere as possible. To make one simple law and that wherever you make a project, mix it with 30% or 20% of, um, of social housing. And in a way to have our tax system in such a way so that it encourages mixer, it encourages solutions which are unknown, like housing and living next door or sporting and living next door that you anyway immediately um, like something special something attractive out of it and, and um, so this kind of simple suggestions that that would be lovely if we can arrange that on federal level or on uh, uh, or on provincial level that, 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 uh, that, so we, as architects, we have to suggest, I think, to the politicians to, to, to say to that and to visualize and ultimately to calculate uh, financially uh, how that can be done. And I think the researchers at the university should be about that, to, um, to raise that kind of subject on that level and to make that then understandable and that politicians can decide on with the limited budgets that they have and all and have to shrink as well. Still, there's one of the, uh, that's another way of collaborating. Uh, you can collab- collaborate with investors, you can collaborate with politicians on these kind of matters. And that, uh, that would help uh, the situation enormously. And to make the best catalog of how to use existing structures and to turn that into hyper innovation. That would be so fascinating to make. Uh, to compute it with Roba, all the empty uh, uh, office structures I could convert into housing. Of course, there's some financial issues that were arranged, and that's now under discussion. How can even insurance companies can, yeah, 
can accept that parts of the value, their invested value in some of the buildings are fading out and can be replaced by an other kind of market system, slightly longer. Normally in offices you do it in 20 years. Housing already takes 30 years. Maybe we have to accept a 40 year system to compensate that action so that Bandidos Arroba turns into, into much more housing area. I would, but it can be of course fantastic to, 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 to accept that and to, to, to study that conversion and to enlarge that. Same with pieces of Tarragona, which are horrible to imagine that you can still want to live there. So it would be um, yeah, how to make an, an escape for that. Uh, that uh, with, a certain, with this crisis, with this kind of uh, suggestion of what are the problems with social housing, as we just talked about, we also can invent or turn that into uh, radical solutions or radical propo propositions for that. And uh, to calculate that, I mean, imagine that we erase half of Tarakon because it's like, anyway ugly and it's like uh, let's skip parts of it, pieces of rails. And say, what, uh, um, um, but have another kind of, say, inhabitation of, of, the, of the buildings and maybe erase some of them. It can turn to, into some complete other, other neighborhoods and maybe very beautiful in that way. And uh, that would be an intriguing, say, uh, illustration.